I challenged myself to beat Pokemon Fire Red using Green's team from the Pokemon Adventures manga. Okay, we're clearing through the Kanto characters, and now we're finally at Green. I won't lie, her team sucks. She uses a ditto for crying out loud. Super fun for storytelling, but awful in the main game without access to Imposter. But just as Green uses her Pokemon's abilities to find creative solutions, we too will be doing the same as we take on all of Kanto and ultimately defeat the Elite Four. As usual, standard Nuzlocke rules apply. Let's jump back into Kanto and start our adventure as Green. That's right, I did not modify the game this time, I just started as a girl character. Huge time save right there as we head out of our house and get stopped by Professor Oak. He lets us choose a starter Pokemon, so of course, I go with Blasty the Squirtle. In the manga, things were very different. Red hears from Professor Oak that while he had Bulbasaur and Blue had Charmander, his remaining Squirtle was stolen by someone. It turns out, that very someone was Green. Yeah, Green was doing the whole stealing a starter way before Silver. She evolved him into a War Turtle and used him to fight against Red at Celadon City. Yeah, in the manga, Green was also basically a con artist. She tricked Red into buying power items using her cute charm, and of course, while battling a wild pincer, the items were totally useless. I can't blame Red though, I'd probably fold too if she looked at me like this. Back in our adventures, I continue through the routes and make our way towards Pewter City. On our way there, we can get another encounter in Viridian Forest, a Weedle from one panel of the manga. Green tried to use this Weedle, along with her cute charm, to trade with a fisherman for his Butterfree, but Red stopped her from tricking him. He's gonna be pretty useless though, as Squirtle can easily solo Brock. He leaves with Geodude, and I send out Blasty. Two Water Guns later, and both the Geodude and Onyx get one shot, winning us a simple badge number one. With Brock defeated, we make our way through the route towards Mount Moon. With all the trainers here, Blasty gets enough XP and evolves into Wartortle. Here we can also get many new encounters, starting with Jiggly the Jigglypuff. In the manga, Jigglypuff was Green's first Pokemon. She would often inflate herself like a balloon to fly Green around in the air. Later on, Green evolved her into a Wigglytuff, which we will be doing as well once we get a Moonstone. Inside Mount Moon, we can get another encounter, Cleffy the Clefairy. In the manga, Green first used Cleffy in the battle against Sabrina. Sabrina and her Kadabra had used their psychic powers to put Green in an illusion, and in order to break out, she sent out Cleffy and Jiggly from, uh, ahem, Pokeballs from her chest, in order to attack with Sing and Growl to disrupt Sabrina's concentration. After she escapes, Sabrina and Team Rocket unleash their Zapdos, Moltres, and Articuno hybrid against our heroes, so Red uses his Moonstone to evolve Cleffy into Clefable, who uses Metronome to catch the monstrosity off guard for our heroes to take it out. Back in our adventures, we finally arrive at Cerulean City. Before we take on Misty, I first defeat Blue, clear through Nugget Bridge, and continue through the routes to get our next encounter, an Abra. In the manga, Green used her Abra to teleport Silver in order to protect him from their battle against the Masked Man. She never used Abra outside of this one scenario, but I wanted to catch him for completion. With all our encounters done, we clear through the routes and arrive at Bill's house. What are you doing? Hmm? What are you doing? Around. Yeah, he can do whatever he wants. Just stay away from our Cleffy, you weirdo. Now that our team's all leveled up, we head back to the gym to take on Misty. She leads with Staryu, and I send out Cleffy. Staryu starts the battle with a Harden, but a Mega Punch does a lot of damage. On the next turn, Staryu fires back with a powerful Water Pulse, even getting a critical hit, but another Mega Punch takes him out, which brings out Misty's Starmie. At our current HP, I switch into Blasty to avoid losing Cleffy to another critical hit Water Pulse. We easily tank it and take out the Starmie with a few super effective bites. That's badge number two. With Misty defeated, it's time to head south to Vermilion City for our next gym badge. First, we clear through the SSN, where I decide to use my two Moonstones to evolve Jiggly and Cleffy. The increased stats are definitely needed to deal with Blue as he sends out Pidgeotto. We lead with Blasty, who takes the bird out with two water pulses. Blue sends out Ivysaur next, so we get off Mega Kick before falling asleep to a Sleep Powder. I switch into Cleffy as Ivysaur sets up a Leech Seed, but a few Mega Punches quickly take him out. Blue sends out Raticate, so I switch into Jiggly to deal with him. Unfortunately, Raticate just does too much damage, and after an unfortunate flinch from a Hyper Fang, we manage to get a Disable off before switching into Blasty to finish off the Giant Rat. Blue sends out his Kadabra next, who misses a Disable as we nearly take him out with a Bite. On the next turn, I play around the Disable and go for a Water Pulse, which pays off, taking out the Kadabra and winning us the battle. Finally, with the team leveled up, it's time to take on Lieutenant Surge. Our team is pretty weak to his Raichu, especially that Blasty will get outsped and one-shot by a Shockwave. He leads with Voltorb, and I send out Blasty. I figured that I could use him to take out his lead Voltorb and Pikachu, which would let Jiggly and Cleffy take care of his Raichu. 
Our plan works, as Blasty takes out Voltorb and Pikachu with Water Pulses and Digs. Luckily, Pikachu is only level 18, or we could have gotten outsped. When Raichu finally comes out, we're low HP, so I switch into Cleffy. Raichu immediately lands a critical hit Shockwave, healing about half our HP. On the next turn, Raichu tries to set up a double team as we retaliate with a Mega Punch, dealing over half. Raichu then goes for another Shockwave, but we tank it and fire off another Mega Punch, taking out Raichu and winning us our third Gym Badge. With everything cleared, it's time to stumble through Rock Tunnel and arrive at Lavender Town. From here, we head west to Celadon City, where we can prepare for our next challenge, the formidable Erika and her team of grass types. We've got the same problem as Lieutenant Surge, with Blasty being weak to her team and Jiggly and Cleffy being kinda useless. Luckily, Celadon is the shopping central of Kanto, so we're able to pick up a few items to help us out. In the game corner, I also ran my auto-gambling script I used in my video playing as Blue to get many copies of Ice Beam, which will be critical for taking out Erika. With everything ready and the team leveled up, it's time to take her on. Erika leads with Victory Bell, and I lead with Cleffy. We start the battle with an Ice Beam, outspeeding and taking out a huge chunk of her HP. Victory Bell tries to use a Stun Spore, but she misses her attack, allowing Cleffy to take her out on the next few turns. Erika sends out Tangela next, who gets one shot by another Ice Beam. It's starting to look like a Cleffy sweep, as Erika sends out Vileplume. We outspeed again and fire off a Psychic, as Vileplume misses another Stun Spore. Like her teammate before, we finish her off with an Ice Beam, winning us our fourth Gym Badge. Sorry Erika, better luck next time. Alright, that's four badges down, you know what that means. Sorry time! We clear through the spinning puzzle at Rocket Hideout, take out Giovanni with a little help from Cupid's arrow, and picked up the drop Silph Scope. With this, we can clear through Lavender Tower, take out the Ghost Marowak with a few water pulses, and rescue Mr. Fuji. He gives us a Poke Flute, which lets us wake up the sleeping Snorlax. We're not here to catch them though, Red can take care of that. Instead, we head south to Route 14, where we can catch our next team member, Diddy the Ditto. In the manga, Ditto was Green's third team member. We first meet him when Team Rocket cornered Green at the edge of a cliff. They sent out Tauros, who could control the rest of Team Rocket's Pokemon by swiping its tail around. After a brief scuffle, Tauros charged off the cliff, dragging poor Diddy along with them. Team Rocket remained unfazed as Tauros climbed back up the cliff with Diddy nowhere to be seen. Soon, however, Tauros started whipping its tail around, commanding Team Rocket's Pokemon to turn against their trainers and attack them. It turns out, Diddy had transformed itself into Tauros, giving our heroes enough time to escape from the previously dire situation. Later on, Diddy would also disguise as other people, allowing Green to disguise herself as anyone she wanted, Mission Impossible style. After catching Diddy, we continue through the routes and arrive at Fuchsia City. Here, we can head to the Safari Zone for another encounter, Nido the Nidoran. In the manga, the first time we see Nido was when we first met Weedle, as Green was trying to trick the fisherman to trade for his Butterfree. Nido went on to be a staple part of Green's team, evolving into Nidorina and later Nidoqueen in a tense battle against Deoxys. Before taking on Koga, we can get one more encounter, a horsey named Queen. If you've seen my video playing as Silver, you'll recognize this familiar face. In the manga, Horsey was originally Silver's Pokemon. Prior to their adventures, Green and Silver were trapped by the Masked Man, and after they escaped, they traded Horsey for Snubble as a remembrance of their shared time together. They later traded back, so until we get Snubble, we'll keep Queen in our party. Now, with all our encounters done, I leveled up the team to challenge Koga. In that time, Nido evolved into Nidorina, and Blasty evolved into Blastoise. Koga leads with Coughing, and I send out Blasty. With the Mystic Water from the game corner, a few Surfs can easily clear through his team. His Muck does manage to poison us with a Toxic, and after Koga sends out his final wheezing, we switch into Cleffy to take him out with a few Psychics. Not a difficult fight at all. That's badge number 5. After the battle, we head back to Saffron City to challenge Sabrina. In order to do so, we first have to clear through Sylph Co and retake the building from Team Rocket's control. And this time, I also evolved Nido into Nido Queen for the extra stats. Blue is here as well, and he challenges us to a battle. He leads with Pidgeot as we send out Blasty, who immediately freezes the bird with an Ice Beam. With that strong start, we're easily able to tear through the rest of Blue's team as Blasty takes out Venusaur and Growlithe, Jiggly takes out Gyarados, and Cleffy takes out Alakazam. With Blue out of the way, Giovanni's a pushover too. With our newly evolved Nido, we're able to power through his team, easily taking out Nidorino, Kangaskhan, and Rhydon. By the time his Nido Queen comes out, we're low HP so I switch into Cleffy to finish the battle. With Sylph Co secured, Team Rocket clears out of Saffron, allowing us to access the gym and take on Sabrina. She leads with Kadabra, and I lead with... Diddy! That's right, I wanted to give him some time to shine, and I figured this would be the perfect opportunity. Kadabra starts with a Calm Mind, which is perfect as we use Transform, stealing his attacks as well as his stat buffs. 
Since Transform leaves us with 5 PP for each move, we're able to use her Calm Mind to boost up to plus 6 in our special attack. Sabrina's Kadabra went for Future Sight, which somehow failed when she used it. I'm guessing since it used to have 90 accuracy, the move missed, which is why it displayed that text. Regardless, with our plus 6 special attack, we're able to take out her Kadabra, Venomoth, Mr. Mime, and Alakazam with a combination of Psy Beams and well-timed Future Sights. Poor Alakazam, he switched in only to die to a Future Sight, before he could even get an attack off. That was a fun use of Diddy, especially since in the manga, Green had used Diddy to disguise herself as Sabrina. It was quite fitting that we were able to trick her with our Diddy and sweep through her team. That's badge number 6. With that out of the way, it's time to make our way to Cinnabar Island to defeat Blaine. While clearing through the Pokemon Mansion, I realized that Blaine was going to be pretty trivial as Blasty could easily surf through his entire team. So, after finding the secret key, I head over to challenge Blaine and lead with Queen. Queen was such a powerful member in our Silver playthrough, so let's see how well we do against Blaine. We start off the battle by one-shotting both his Growlithe and Ponyta as Blaine sends out his Rapidash. Unfortunately, we're not able to outspeed, and Queen is forced to tank a Fire Blast. On the bright side, we're able to one-shot the Rapidash with a Surf, but after Blaine sends out his Ace Arcanine, I'm forced to finish the battle with Blasty. All in all, that was a pretty solid performance from Queen. After the battle, Queen tries to evolve into Seedra, but we need her to stay as a horsey to trade to Silver. Instead, we accept Bill's offer to head over to the Sevi Islands, where we can meet all sorts of new Pokemon, including our final team member, Snug the Snubble. I couldn't figure out a good point in our adventures to add him, but I figured since we can get some Johto Pokemon here, it would be pretty fitting. In the manga, Green had traded Snubble for Silver's Horsey after escaping the Masked Man. After they traded back, Snubble became a key member of Green's team, later further evolving into a Granbull. I tried evolving Snug to get ready and challenge Giovanni, but um, since we don't have the national decks, we can't do anything. Honestly, this was a pretty stupid change, especially if you have Golbat on your team. So, I went back to the drawing table and, um, evolved Snug on my own. With everything ready, it's time to take on the leader of Team Rocket himself. Giovanni leaves with Rhyhorn, and I send out Cleffy. We immediately outspeed and one-shot him with an Ice Beam, which brings out Giovanni's Nidoqueen. We stay in and go for another Ice Beam, which does a huge amount of damage, but Nidoqueen tanks it and goes for an Earthquake. Giovanni decides to heal, so we stay in and continue to fire off powerful Ice Beams. Nidoqueen goes down, and Giovanni sends out Nidoking. I switch it up this time, going for a Psychic, which nearly takes out Nidoking, but he survives in the red and retaliates with an Earthquake. Giovanni heals, and knowing that we outspeed, I stay in and use Ice Beam. We manage to get a 10% freeze, which lets us heal up a bit with Soft Boiled before taking the Nidoking out. Giovanni sends out Dugtrio, who outspeeds us and hits us with an Earthquake. I accidentally misclick and use Psychic, which Dugtrio tanks. On the next turn, he tries to use Slash, but gets charmed by our cute charm as we use the turn to heal with another Soft Boiled. Then, with the trio mobilized by Love, we're able to take him out with another Psychic. Giovanni sends out his Ace, his level 50 Rhyhorn, but a single Ice Beam is more than enough to take him out, winning us the battle and our final Gym Badge. Finally, it's time to make our way to Victory Road to take on the Elite Four. On our way there, we get stopped by Blue, but we can easily handle his team. Jiggly takes out Pidgeot, Rhyhorn, and Gyarados as Blasty takes care of his Growlithe, Venusaur, and Alakazam. With the last obstacle cleared, we make our way through the Bad Checkers and clear through the rest of Victory Road. It was pretty cool to see Granbull use Strength on the Boulder Puzzles, since usually you can't even use them in the base game. Finally, we make our way to the other side and get ready to challenge the Elite Four. First up is Lorelei. She leads with Dugong, and I send out Cleffy. With the Calm Mind TM from Sabrina, we were able to set up a little before taking her out with a Thunderbolt. Cloyster comes out next, who gets outsped and taken out by another Thunderbolt. Lorelei sends out Slowbro next, who meets the same fate. Her Lapras, however, is pretty tanky and lives with a little bit of health, which lets her get off a Confuse Ray. On the next turn, Lorelei heals, but we hit through the Confusion, bringing Lapras back to the red. On the next turn, Lorelei heals again, but this time, we hit through the Confusion again and land a high roll, getting a clean one-shot on her. Lorelei's final Pokemon Jinx comes out and puts us asleep with a Lovely Kiss, but with our Calm Mind buffs, I stay in and tank her attacks until we can wake up and heal with a Soft Boiled. This drags on for a while, but we're able to out-heal and take her out with another Thunderbolt, winning us our first Elite Four battle. Next up is Bruno. He sends out Onyx as we lead with Blasty. A Surf cleanly one-shots the Land Snake, which brings out Bruno's Hitmonchan. We stay in and go for another Surf, but Hitmonchan tanks it and retaliates with a Rock Tomb. 
This lowers our speed, and on the next turn, Hitmonchan outspeeds and hits us with a Sky Uppercut. Blasty tanks it and retaliates with a Surf, which takes him out. Bruno then sends out Hitmonlee, who outspeeds thanks to the speed drop and hits us with a decent Mega Kick. Our Surf nearly takes him out, but now I'm forced to switch into Nito as Bruno heals. A single Earthquake later, and Hitmonlee goes down. Bruno sends out a second Onix, but with his low special defense, he goes down to a single Ice Beam. Finally, Bruno sends out his final Pokemon, his Ace Machamp. We outspeed and use Earthquake, taking out half his HP as Machamp uses Bulk Up. I switch to a special Flamethrower, going for that chance to burn as well, as Machamp opts to go for a Scary Face. With our speed lowered, Machamp now outspeeds and uses Cross Chop, but we tank it and retaliate with the Flamethrower. This brings Machamp to the red, so Bruno heals with a Full Restore as we continue fishing for burns. We're able to land a critical hit and a burn, and on the following turn, we tank Cross Chop as we retaliate with an Earthquake, and that coupled with the burn damage is enough to take him out, winning us our second Elite 4 battle. Third is Agatha. She leaves with Gengar, and I send out Blasty. We immediately outspeed and go for a bite, dealing a ton of damage as Gengar retaliates with a weak Shadow Punch. Another bite later, and Gengar goes down, which brings out Agatha's Golbat. She manages to tank an Ice Beam, letting her confuse us with a Confuse Ray. On the next turn, Agatha wastes her full restore as we bring Golbat down to the yellow with a Surf. On the following turn though, her Confuse Ray finally pays off as we hit ourselves in Confusion. Golbat only hits us with a weak Air Cutter, and one Ice Beam later, Golbat goes down. Agatha sends out Arbok, so I switch into Nito to tank the Sludge Bomb. A single Earthquake takes her out, a critical hit Flamethrower takes Haunter out, and a few Ice Beams from Cleffy, plus a Lucky Freeze, takes her Gengar out. That's 3 down, 3 to go. Last up is Lance. I know his team can be pretty scary, but with all our Thunderbolt and Ice Beam TMs, I'm confident that we can win. Lance leads with Gyarados, and I lead with Cleffy. We start the battle by setting up a Calm Mind, as Gyarados goes for a weak Dragon Rage. One 4 times super effective Thunderbolt later, and Gyarados goes down. Lance sends out Aerodactyl next, who outspeeds with an Ancient Power, and manages to survive a Thunderbolt in return. Lance heals with a Full Restore, which gives us an opportunity to heal with a Soft Boiled. On the next turn, Aerodactyl uses another Ancient Power, but he falls for a Q Charm as we retaliate with an Ice Beam. On the next turn, he's immobilized by Love, so of course I use this opportunity to set up a Calm Mind. One Thunderbolt later, and Aerodactyl goes down. Lance sends out his Ace Dragonite, and we somehow outspeed and take him out with a 4 times super effective Ice Beam. Both his follow-up Dragonairs get outsped and go down to a single Ice Beam as well, getting us a pretty simple victory to the final Elite Four battle. Finally, it's time to take on Champion Blue. Red's off somewhere at Mount Silver, so it's up to us to take the title of Champion back from Blue. He accepts our challenge, sending out Pidgeot as we send out Snug. Pidgeot starts the battle with a Sand Attack as we retaliate with a Charm, harshly lowering his attack. With that and the Intimidate, Pidgeot's Aerial Ace barely does any damage as we miss our next Charm. On the next turn, Pidgeot lowers our attack with a Feather Dance as we miss another Charm. Finally, even after another Sand Attack, we're able to connect with a Charm, lowering Pidgeot's attack to minus 5. I switch into Nido, who hardly takes any damage from an Aerial Ace. In return, our Poison Point activates and poisons Pidgeot, and after two misses, we manage to connect with the Thunderbolt, taking him out. Blue sends out Alakazam next, and fearing a Psychic, I switch into the Tanky Cleffy to absorb it. Alakazam continues to fire off Psychics as we heal back all the damage with Soft Boiled. In between healing, we also start setting up Calm Mind so his Psychics will start doing less and less damage. Eventually, we set up enough to two-shot the Alakazam with a few Thunderbolts. Blue sends out Rhydon next, so we switch to Ice Beam for another clean one-shot. Next up is Gyarados, so we switch back to Thunderbolt for yet another one-shot. I guess that's why they call it Bolt Beam. We are really well covered for anything Blue could throw at us. Even as Arcanine can't outdamage our Soft Boils, even with his powerful extreme speed, and goes down to two Thunderbolts. Finally, Blue sends out his Ace Venusaur, but yeah, that's another easy one-shot with Ice Beam. And with that, Champion Blue falls as we become the new champion of the Kanto region. Overall, this challenge wasn't too difficult, as Blassie helped a lot in the early game, and Cleffy carried a lot in the late game. Going into this challenge, I was worried that some team members would be left in the dust, but considering how useless some of Green's team members are, I feel pretty happy with the small moments everyone had to shine. For my next video, I'm thinking about either doing Yellow's Awful Team, or moving on to Generation 3 with Ruby's team. I'm really looking forward to all the cool strategies we can pull off using his cast form, so let me know what you guys think. Also, would you guys prefer the classic Emerald or the updated Oras? 
I'll have a poll up for you guys to tell me how you feel, but feel free to elaborate in the comments. I promise I read each and every one. And hey, if you've made it this far, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. I'm absolutely blown away by the growth of my channel, and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. More videos just like this one are coming soon, so stay tuned. I've got a playlist of my manga videos at the end of this video too if you want to check it out. I've got red, blue, gold, silver, and now green. I'm working my way through all of the characters, so be on the lookout for what's to come. As always, I appreciate you guys for being here. Until next time, this has been Magnus. I'll catch you guys later.